welcome to the Storm Team 8 special Weather on the Edge. I'm meteorologist Kyla Grogan and tonight we're going to show you what goes into creating the forecast, how Storm Team 8 truly works as a team, and some of the cutting edge technology we bring right to your fingertips. Come on, let's meet the team. Joining me tonight are meteorologists Gil Simmons and Sam Cantro, and also Justin Goldstein. And guys, I'm the new girl in town, so mm. fire away any questions you have. This is your big opportunity. Well, I think a lot of us uh, want to hear a little about your last job and what you were kind of doing. Because yeah. I know a lot of people at home are going to want to know. <laughs> well, I was at the Weather Channel. Um, I had the really good fortune of going down there. You know, I was originally supposed to work there for three months, and it turned into almost three years. Wow. Um, That's and a I pretty got, sweet deal. It was amazing, you know. And I came in right before Hurricane Sandy, which obviously was a huge huge weather event for everyone, including all of you here. Um, and I learned a lot, you know, so I looked at it as a huge opportunity to just take all the information I could get from all the wonderful experts I got to work with um, and the meteorologists there that, as you know, their depth of experience is extraordinary. So, you know, a lot of you learn a lot when you go to school, right? And you study meteorology, but you learn more when you're on the job and you're learning from the other meteorologists around you who've been through each weather phenomena. So. Well, plus it must not have been boring. I mean, every day you have a national <laughs> scope, sure. right? Mm -hmm. So there's always something to talk about. Yeah, there's weather happening somewhere. Right. And you definitely uh, have that adage with you at your the Weather Channel because it's funny. In a way, you would walk out the door in Atlanta and think, "Oh, it's actually nice out here." You forget about that because <laughs> yeah. you're talking well, about the bad weather. Well, wait a minute. Speaking of that, I always wonder. So, if you're talking about snow in Denver and it's 70 and sunny yeah. where you are in Atlanta. Do you find that difficult that you're not able to actually walk out the door and see that? Well, you know, I think the right now technology allows us to have cameras that are everywhere, right. literally everywhere. So a lot of the times I would go online and start looking at cameras mm -hmm. that were all around different cities. Uh, I'm sure, you know, Connecticut will provide its challenges for you here, even though, you know, our boring weather might last a day or two, but it definitely changes. Well, but listen, here's sure. the funny thing. Since I got here, I don't really feel like anything's changed because it's been storm after storm after storm. <laughs> if I were at the Weather Channel, I'd be covering it too. Right. You know, they're up sure. here too. So it's, it's been interesting. It's been an interesting ramp down because you, know, you would think moving to local, maybe the pace will be different, but so, so far. Nonstop. I'm plenty busy. Yeah. The hits keep rolling. And I know all of you look at me a little differently, right? Just don't talk. This guy yeah, loves the weirdo snow. that really loves the yeah, snow. Whatever. So, okay, we, let's turn the tables, Gil. What is it that you love about the snow, and is there something fun that you do when the snow is happening? Well, uh, well, a lot of things are, are fun to me. I just I love winter. Uh, since I was very young and a child, I've been outside in the snow. Um, I was riding snowmobiles in a blanket as a baby. So <laughs> snowmobiling is big to me. I mean, I drive like five, six hours, go up to Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont, and ride in a typical day 250, maybe 300 miles on a that's snowmobile. It. So to me, wow. that's fun. You're sick. Everybody's now, like, wait a minute, I'm, part, I'm bundled up for this weather. I'm very, out there. Obviously, Sam has a very different perspective. No, oh, that's yeah. okay. Gil, Gil and I love to joke because we're both the morning people, but we are opposite literally ends. the exact opposite. You know, Gil is <laughs> Gil's the, the cold weather lover, the winter weather lover. The hotter, the better, as far as I'm concerned. No. If it was 95 degrees high humidity every single day, <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that I like to do. Love to ride motorcycles. Got my motorcycle license this past year, too, and oh. I was riding scooters for years, too. Um, other than that, I love working on my house. That's something Gil and I both are, are big with hand. Yes. Doing that kind of Good stuff to know. Too. I will, I'll make a note of Jack that. of all trades, all right, master so of Justin, none. Justin, you're Justin. more of a classic kind of baseball and all Americana kind of guy. I'm not good at baseball, <laughs> but I, I like baseball. I like football. My teams are the Mets and Jets, so I'm a natural born loser right there. Oh, <laughs> yep. Misery you loves said company. it. You said it. <laughs> Misery loves <laughs> company. Uh, I enjoy boating. I enjoy flying. And, you know, dream jobs, realistically, maybe I'd be a pilot if I wasn't a meteorologist and a stretch. I'd be a baseball player or play-by-play -play mm. guy. You know. That's cool. Kyle, I'll tell you one funny thing because you were talking about how you started uh, the Weather Channel right around Sandy. Yeah. My th I did two weekends on That's the air right, here at WTNH, and That's my third right. weekend on the air was during Sandy. So, you know, you're nervous you first start out, yeah. and, and it's sort of a trial by fire as time goes on. And then third weekend in a row, actually before the third weekend even started, we're out here doing, you know, crazy coverage for, for Sandy. So it was, it was a very interesting period of time. Well, there's no choice but to learn and pick it up when you're in one and of those situations. And the last couple of years here have been crazy. Crazy. From that to the crazy blizzard that we mm -hmm. saw in February, we had Irene before that. It's been busy. It has been. All right. Well, we have a fifth member of Storm Team 8 who isn't here right now, and that is our executive producer and meteorologist, Kevin Arnone. And I got to sit down with Kevin and talk about his passion for forecasting. When I was nine years old, my family and I were on vacation in Florida and a thunderstorm came through and we were staying in Orlando. A thunderstorm came through, it actually produced an EF1 tornado within a mile from where the hotel was that we were staying at. 
And ever since that, that moment, my father took me to go see all the damage. And I was only nine, so you know, I really didn't understand that people's lives were affected, people could be injured. And I just really wanted to learn more about why this happens. So my mom, I gotta give her a shout out, Angela Arnone, she, uh, she bought me weather books. She took me to see Dr. Mel. Uh, he had a few uh, book talks when I, when I was growing up. And she actually turned my dream of being a meteorologist into my career. I've decided to go to Western Connecticut State University in Danbury, and she was a big part of that. I grew up here in Connecticut. I was born and raised in Orange. I went to Peck Place School for my elementary. Second, third grade is when I really started to want to learn about weather. From Peck Place School, I went to Amity Junior High. And then from there, I went to Amity High School, which is in Woodbridge. And I had a teacher, Miss Day, who was my chemistry teacher, and she loves weather. I've actually gone for a school visit there. The thing I love most about my job is, is the school visits. I love going on the school visits. I love just telling people my story and how I got started and the forecasting. I think in Connecticut we have four distinct seasons. You know, we, we have the blizzards, we have the hurricanes, we have the tornadoes. I like to listen to music when I'm forecasting. It kind of just calms me down a little bit and just really, I, I like to focus in and, and take my time. After I go to the meeting and, and brief everyone with what's going on with the weather, I come back to the weather center and I put on Phil Collins. That's my, uh, my go-to music that I listen to. It's a dream come true. All five of us have such a passion for meteorology and for weather, and it's, it really is a great team to be a part. And everyone's just so nice, and uh, I'm enjoying every moment of it. It's, like I said, it's a dream come true. And of course, I personally have had such the pleasure of working with Kevin on a daily basis as someone coming in new. He knows the ropes for everything, so I adore him. But I say that all the well, time I on do social too. media. Uh, <laughs> he's okay. Of course, he likes cold weather and snow, so that, uh, you know, He's helps. on your side. He's on my you team. You know what I like yes. about Kevin? He's passionate, and he was a Weather Edge contributor during Sandy. Mm -hmm. And the video that he showed me, the first time I met him, I said, hey. Kevin yeah, was actually fantastic. our intern. Years he ago. was, yes. Kevin was our intern. Come Watch out. He's going to have mm -hmm. all of our jobs before right. we know it. <laughs> hey, the big task. news, everyone has been talking about, of course, is all the snow and the bitter cold weather that we've been seeing. Yeah, and it all changed as we got going into the winter season. A lot of people were asking, hey, what's going on? Are we ever going to see winter? So I figured we'd take a little look and see how that pattern changed. In the world of weather, meteorologists consider December, January, February as the winter season. It has been a rough ride for all of us. We didn't need the snow shovel, but we were looking for this. And many of us started to wonder, when will winter ever show up? The active December pattern delivered rainstorms and not snowstorms. The storm on the 9th and 10th, if that did fall as snow, we would have had 18 to 25 inches. But it was rain and it kept falling right through the end of the month, sending the monthly total well above normal. Here's the reason why. The jet stream curled north up through the Great Lakes, dragging mild air with each storm, so it was rain. The temperature even hit the 50s in early January. It all changed around the 24th when we didn't need this, we needed this. The jet stream shifted offshore, more and more snow developed across our area, and the parade of storms coming up continued to dump snow as we continued into the later part of January and going right into February, wiping out the snow deficit and putting us at a snow surplus. And I know you're eager for spring to arrive. The way this pattern's going, you're still gonna need not only one, but two of these. Coming up, we'll show you how to stay ahead of the weather before it happens, no matter where you are. We'll explore our new Weather Edge app, and we'll take some questions from News 8 viewers when our Storm Team 8 Weather on the Edge special continues. Connecticut gets rain, it gets snow, but it only takes a few minutes for the weather to change in our state. And with the new WXEdge.com app, you can be ahead of the weather before it happens. It's a resource more valuable than the umbrella, the sunscreen, and the snow shovel combined. Have the information you need to know before you head out the door tomorrow morning. Right in your pocket, have your own personalized meteorologist give you a forecast no matter where you are across the state of Connecticut and never have the weather surprise you again.
Check the temperature in your location and view the live interactive radar that lets you track storms as they move into your town and view up to the minute lightning strikes to help keep you safe outdoors and help keep you and your family safe by customizing alerts that go off anytime severe weather hits your town. Get an hour by hour forecast that's for your exact location, customized by our team of meteorologists, not just a generic forecast a computer puts together. See the latest Storm Team 8 video forecast and interact with us by sending Storm Team 8 the weather in your town at the press of a button. And don't forget, you can always get the latest storm cancellations and delays on the WXH.com app. You can hey, flip me around. Thanks. You can also get the latest video discussion in full screen as well on the app. Keep up with the changes in the weather so Mother Nature doesn't change your plans. Download the new WXEdge.com app available on Android and iPhone. One of the coolest parts about the app, and this is something I get to do when I'm doing the Weather Lab stuff, is it's really the best way for me to actually look right on my hands and see what the radar is like in yep. the exact yes. spot. Coolest part about that is We've downloaded apps on our phones that give us radar that are live and you can actually see your exact location. You can do it on the app, which is really cool. So when I'm driving all over the place in the weather lab or being driven, I should say, I can look right on the app and see exactly where the snow is and stuff. Because sometimes it's tough when you got your earpiece in mm -hmm. when you're on TV to be able to hear, all right, where is the worst snow and stuff you know, like that. You know, the other cool thing is it's specific to Connecticut, you right. know, because any other app that you get out there is really more made to be a national app. And this sure. one is going to really just feed the information that you need on a daily basis here. My and favorite the part would be the, the video forecast. And some nights I'm working late and I don't get up early to watch Gil. When I get up Hi 8, 830, North I can Poles open up my app. I can see forecast Gil's forecast and I don't have to go search. It's all right there. Now, you knew I was going to say that. Didn't <laughs> you? That's exactly what I The other thing I like is it, it actually gets updated as soon as we record a video. It is on there is right instant. away. So you don't have to wait around or go hunting around searching for links that it's the most recent one, they're on there right away. See, Gil, huh? great minds. I like. guess. Here we go. <laughs> We're there. Now, let's answer some questions. We like to always hear from you here at News 8. So uh, one of our uh, viewers, Kara from Orange, writes, my favorite segment from Storm Team 8 is when they drive around in the mobile weather lab. Mm -hmm. My question is, do they ever get nervous driving in those dangerous conditions to show what it's like outside? Best way to answer that is, I'm not nervous or we're not nervous when we're driving around and we're going at a speed that's safe to the weather conditions. So no, I don't feel nervous when I'm a passenger in the weather lab because I know that we're in good hands and we're following the just the safety protocols that are, are out there. You gotta love that the viewers, they care enough about you. You know, oh, people yeah. are always like, make sure you got your seatbelt, they Put got our that jacket media. on too. Mm -hmm. yep. yep, they're taking care of you. I there. think one of the scary things when we're driving in, around in the lab is when precipitation sort of can start to change on us a little bit. You yeah. know, snow we can handle. The, the lab sure. is a big vehicle, it weighs a lot. I mean, you know, we're, we're used to this kind of stuff. So, right. So we're on the road with that. All right, we got another question to talk right. about. Uh, Aston asks, what's the all time record low temperature in Connecticut? What is the date and what is mm. the town that has this honor? Mm. I mean, this is a good little piece of weather yeah, trivia. Drum roll! <laughs> Yes. Gil and I were actually talking about this earlier. The answer to this question is negative 37 degrees. Whoa. That was the coldest yes. temperature. That was in Norfolk. That was on February 16th, 1943. Wow. And I'm hoping that I got mm. that one right. And and don't they think call that? You never see that number anytime no. soon. Yeah. But don't no. they call Norfolk the icebox of Connecticut? Norfolk for good reason, right? Yeah. Connecticut, yeah. And plus, that is not, for those uh, kind of trying to think about this, that's not the wind chill, what we often talk that's about. No, that's the actual temperature. temperature. So Thanks. that is uh, really cold stuff. And still to come tonight, we'll show you all the collaboration that goes into making the forecast every day to bring you the most up-to-date and accurate information. And we'll talk to some Weather Edge contributors, those eyes on the ground that give us first-hand reports on conditions across our area. That and much more when our Storm Team 8 Weather on the Edge special returns. This is not how we make a snow forecast at News 8, but it's a good stress reliever. Making a snow forecast is one of the most difficult tasks a meteorologist has. We're going to show you what goes through our minds when we put together a snow forecast here at Storm Team 8. There are so many variables that can impact how much snow will fall. Snowstorms have general characteristics based on where they're coming from. Some snows are cut and dry, like a moisture starved Alberta clipper, generally a light event. It approaches what we Typically, call our big snows come from southern storms that ride the coast, bringing lots of tropical moisture up from the Gulf of Mexico. When is the snow falling? The sun strength is important. Even behind the clouds, it is warming the atmosphere. 
A snow event in mid-April may feature snow melting on contact during the daylight hours and only sticking to the grass at night. While a storm in early February, it may not matter at all due to the weak winter sun. How about the ground temperature? Snow falling may melt on sidewalks and streets early in a snowstorm if we've had a few mild days prior to the event. Or if the ground is wet from rain, the flakes will melt initially. Temperature is key. Snow ratio is what it all comes down to. Colder temperature means a higher ratio, which gives us a fluffy powdery snow which really piles up. A temperature near 32 creates a lower ratio, which can be a wet marshmallow cream type snow. For tomorrow, the storm team made forecast is never created from scratch, but rather fine tuned from shift to shift. Our meteorologists are in constant communication with one another. The reason to this approach is the more checks and balance we take in our preparation, the more thorough, accurate and detailed we can be. You know, when it comes to snow forecasting, we're all scientists, we all have our own opinion and we all feel strongly about it. And it's to me like playing devil's advocate. I can make a great argument for a bad forecast and then, you know, Sam or Kyla or Gil jumps in and they say, what about that? And that's something that maybe I'm not thinking of and it can yeah. change your whole streamline of thinking. So more heads together makes a better forecast. And it's just important because everyone comes with their own perspective, mm -hmm. right? From your history of your, the, what you, how you learned, of where you've worked, of what weather you've encountered. Right. You know, each storm teaches you something that the next time around you go, wait a minute, mm -hmm. I remember this last I've time. I've seen this before, <laughs> yeah, I've seen this yes. Before. Exactly. I can tell you a lot of times I try not to get emotion involved in it because I joke and I always say that I hate snow so much, but you <laughs> see a high snowfall total on a map and I just, I don't want to have it be on there right. <laughs> my, for myself, but at the same time it's like, well, you know, you got to kind of do what it says in there. I mean, we could literally spend the entire day looking at forecast models from the second we wake up to the second we go to sleep and still not look at everything that we need to look at to get what we need to know. And it's always this factor of Long Island Sound. I think working here for as many years as I have in this local area, that can really have an effect on early season, late season snow. Yeah. You can either make it or break it because of that water temperature and any time that wind changes. So and there's the, always a challenge here. One of the cool things of, of having it not just be the four of us or the four of us plus Kevin right. is that we actually have a lot of other people who are helping us and that's our Weather Edge contributors. We got a ton of them across the state. Take a look. It's a forecast, a Connecticut travel guidebook, an allergist, a cookbook, and best of all, it's not about what we want to show you, it's about what you want to show us. I started right when the site first came out, so I've gotten uh, just shy of 100 articles on there. I love being outside. My favorite things to do are outside, so I'm always checking the forecast and temperatures, the radar. There's just a bunch of interesting articles that you're not going to find archived altogether on any other website. You've got, you know, tips, you've got historical data, weather events that are currently happening, it's all in one place, and you're not going to find that all together somewhere else. And our contributors come from well beyond the state lines, all the way to storm chase teams in the Midwest. We've both had interest in it since we were younger, so it's just kind of something like, you just want to see Mother Nature up close and personal. And it's just really cool to see a tornado, except it's just destroying a town. Galleries of the fury of Mother Nature across the world, tips on gardening, and even a hub to help inform the people that keep you safe in an emergency. Especially during the winter time, I'm on there all the time. I'm looking, I'm trying to see what's coming with the snow. It changes our job each time around. Every call is different. I mean, we can get three feet of snow and have to send payloaders to their calls with the ambulances. From a 911 dispatcher and storm chaser to professional writers and gardeners, our WXEdge.com contributor team is writing everything you could ever want or need to know before heading out the door. Next, we'll take a look ahead to the spring and summer and what could be in the forecast for Connecticut. Our storm teammate Weather on the Edge special will be right back. All right, it's been a great program so far, but I know a lot of people out there are thinking, Wait a minute, I want them to tell me a little about <laughs> what's coming up. Give me some prediction here. Yeah. And by the way, big mention with uh, all of you. I love working with all of you. It's been great here. 
on set. And just a quick mention to everyone behind the scenes. Yeah, we put a absolutely. lot of work into this. Is this your Oscar speech? Uh, no, you know what? I got your wrap, Sam. <laughs> now, let me just give you a little idea what I'm thinking here coming up. As we roll out and continue, I'm thinking this pattern change should really be abrupt, probably around early April. And my concern is if this thing goes from what's been pretty cold through at least the back half of the winter to all of a sudden we're mild, with the snow that's still up Flooding. north and in many areas, the amount of moisture that's around to melt down, flooding is going to yeah. be a concern. We see that on the Connecticut River, but I think this year we're going to have to pay extra close attention. And mm -hmm. that's to any of you that might have a sump pump in the basement or things like that. If the storm parade continues, a lot of snow melt, even up north, this is going to be a big deal. And with the harsh cold winter we've had, I think it's very similar to last spring where early spring it's still very gray, very cool, mm -hmm. and a lot of cool temperatures because sound temperatures are going to be much colder than normal. Right? Now the interesting oh, well, thing. Fun. Yeah, I yeah. know. <laughs> Wait, just a messenger. Us up, Sam. Well, just, I mean, I'm, I'm going to try. Here's the, here's the thing with the sound temperature. Sound temps are actually below average, but uh, right on the Atlantic Ocean, just near the shoreline, it's ah. actually above average. That's not necessarily good for uh, the hurricane season because if anything forms and gets close to the coast, mm -hmm. a lot of the time it sort of loses its thunder. It may not lose its thunder, its thunder as that ends up happening. So you're we'll thinking how they active are. tropical season once we get going you know, June, the July, level, The August. level of activity, I, I couldn't tell you with 100% certainty, but what I could tell you is if something got close to the coast, mm -hmm. it could definitely hug it and that could keep it strength. You don't want that to happen. So That'll keep us though. busy. So yeah. I would say I'm not the biggest fan of long-term predictions because I think they're really tough. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we'll agree with you on patterns, yeah. right? <laughs> so since I want it to be warmer and more sunny and more I'll fabulous, <laughs> uh, let's just say it's going to be in like, I don't know, a month or so and maybe, maybe okay. it'll be right. It'll be hot in July. There you go. Dark. I would love to be right. Well, that wraps up our Storm Team 8 special Weather on the Edge. Now for Gil, Sam, Justin, and Kevin, I'm Kyla Grogan. Thanks for joining us tonight.